In the last episode, you saw me harvest two beautiful young fallow books to add to our call sheet. This time, I'm going to show you how to successfully skin the deer and how to check that it's safe to eat. So we're back at the larder. These are the guys that we've shot earlier. Um, so the next thing is we've got to get them dressed out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is open them up down the front, down the centre. So it's going to be a cut from here right the way down to his neck. Now I'm going to expose his trick area windpipe. So I'm just opening the muscle up around his windpipe. I'm going to bring that down there like that either side. Just make sure that's free. So when I come to take his lungs out and have a look at those in a minute, that'll all come out as one, well, which will be fine. After this, we can start skinning the shoulder. We always want to try and keep him on his back as square as possible. I'll put that between my legs and hold it there. And now I've got the line of where I'm going to work is there. It's quite visible for you to see. So, we'll take my knife again. We're gonna work exactly the same as we did it on the other side. We're just gonna cut back there and follow the line of where I'm holding it, straight up his leg. And then the bone will be exposed there and you'll be able to use that as a guide so you're not cutting into the flesh. Go straight down the side of the bone, like so. We're just peeling it off. Just peeling it, peeling it, peeling it. At this time of the year, they are quite loose in the, in the hair. They haven't got the winter coats on. Just peel that back. Like that. And just move around a little bit, just to get it tight again, so we can see where we're working. And start again. Just working it, working it, working it. Okay, so when we've got to there, we've gone past the knee joint. So the knee's there, you can see it flex. There's two joints in the knee. And if you can see, you can see the bit of a white bit there. That is the joint that we want to be taking it off at because that joint is nice and flat and you'll be able to cut your knife through it. So straighten him out, put your knife in there. And hopefully we'll get the joint like that and bend it as it goes back. And through we go. No, no effort really whatsoever. Now we've got that, we're still attached there, you can see, because that's where we've worked with the knives, either side. So just put the thumb, the crook of your hand, in around there, just gently pull it. And we'll peel it off the shoulder. And doing it like that, we're keeping the skin away from the meat, so we're trying not to get as much hair on it. That's the front end ready for pulling off. We're just going to saw the brisket. We've already done the grolic in the field. This is just to open the chest cavity up. So when we come to take his um, liver, lungs and heart out, it's easier to get down there and do it. Quite simple. All we're going to do is make an incision from the bottom of his neck right the way down to the back of his chest where we did the grolic in the field. So we're going to do the back legs now. Same thing again. Just get the leg, pull it forward, stick it between your legs, and now you've got the line straight the way up of where we're going to go. Nice and simple. I'm going to start at the bottom. I always use my knife when I'm cutting or skinning on the side, not down so I'm going to be cutting into the meat. If I was cutting down at it to open it up like that, I'd be cutting here, which is not what we want to do. So I'm holding my knife on the side, using my index finger on my knife. So it's like using a pencil. You can feel where it's going. I'm just following it up. Be careful not to cut this tendon because if we cut that, we're gonna be in a world of hurt when it comes to hanging him up.
And we're just going to peel it off again. Nice and warm, it's very easy. Just push it off. I'm going to use, and use the heel of my knife rather than the blade. It's a nice young book. Just push it off. Just keep pushing. A little bit there. Use my index finger on my knife again. And then just push. So that's as far as we need to go with that side. I'm quite happy with that. We kept it all nice and clean. Now we can go down the inside of the leg to the center of the deer. And that's as far as we need to go. That is the middle of the animal, right there, that bit. And we no need to go any further than that. So now we're just gonna take this leg off. Same again, it's jointed. And the joint we want to be taking it off is here. In front of here, is right in there. So we'll just cut through that leg like that. Might need a bit of a snap. Follow it down a little bit, get it in the right skin. Heel of the crook of your hand again. Just give it a little pull. And you can see how all the skin is hanging back away from the meat. Exactly the same again. We're just gonna do it on the other side. So we've cleared all four legs on the cradle, which is, I find it's easier. The skin falls away, gravity does its thing, than being hung up in the air. If you're hung up in the air, you're trying to work, you're trying to work in between the legs because now it's concertina together. When he's led on his back, he's naturally splaying. It just makes the job quite a lot easier. So as you can see, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to just finish opening him up down the down the centre, fold the inside back to, to here and clear his flanks and down the front off his rib cage and then we're going to just take the skin off the back and that will be him skinned. You can see the point of his flank where it joins his leg there. I'm just going to get the heel of my knife, push it through there. Give that a little tweak. You can just see where it started catching. I don't want that to catch because if I kept pulling that now, it'd pull that muscle off there, but I want to leave it on. So I'm just going to work it a little bit with my knife, holding it there. Just give it a little push. Using my hands and my forearm, pushing it down. You can see how the flanks come in all nice and easy now. Put my fist in again. 
Just wiggle it, push it down inside. A lot easier than trying to use it with a knife. So if you're using your knife, you're just making score marks in it. Just keep pushing it down with my fist. And as you can see, it's all coming together quite nicely. It's all coming together. We've um, got the back legs free now. The flanks are free. The brisket and the ribs are free. And we're just held there and there. And that again, let go of it and it's keeping the carcass clean. Now we're back to the back. Got to remove the tail. There's various joints in the tail that you can take. You'll find a joint. Work through it. Take the tail off, like so, through the bone. No problem. Just pull down with it. Bit that side. Push it away with my fist. Hit that side. Down. Down. Put his neck. Just keep going down. There we go. Discard. We've got it skinned. The next thing we're going to do is remove the bladder, which is still on the inside, and remove the vital organs. Then we're going to inspect the vital organs. We've got to inspect the vital organs. We're checking for disease. If there's any problems with the animal, that's where we're going to find it. The telltale signs are going to be in the glands, inflammation, whatever, if something isn't right. The kidneys give us the most information about the animal. They filter everything. They are, they're like your car's main engine filter. They do everything, do everything. So if your kidneys are pretty much clean and nice, then the rest of the animal is going to be pretty much good. This animal, I can tell you now, there's going to be no problems whatsoever when we get inside. I'll be very surprised if it is. It's a beautiful little beast. There's no inflammation in the glands in the legs or anywhere that we've looked at. It's been lovely. Went round his to the bottom. Down. And it'll all come out nice and simple at the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to check the heart. Just having a look, making sure the muscle's all nice and clean and fresh, which it is. I'm just going to do the liver, it's lovely, no parasitic infection or anything in there. There's um, two more glands in the lungs, again we're checking for TB. The lungs are nice and clean and pink, no sign of any infection in there, that's lovely. Do the same on the other side, nice and clean. Beautiful. Leave the kidneys in situ, because if I were, I'm not going to sell this to anybody else, it's for myself, um, but if I was selling it to anybody else, if the kidneys are in, and you see they've been inspected and the kidneys are clean, they pretty much, they pretty much know that the animal was good. Made an incision in them. Just have a look. Beautiful. Nice and clean. Yeah, a beautiful, helpful little boy. Do the other one, make an incision. Nice clean kidneys. Fantastic. Okay, so we've harvested him, we've grolicked him, we've dressed him, 
we've inspected him and there he is, he's a beautiful little beast. I'd just like to say, if you're going to do it, don't be daunted by it, get stuck in and do it. Take your time, keep your hands clean, keep your utensils clean. It's not that big a scary job once you're doing it. It's so much more rewarding to do it yourself than to kill something, whip the head off, whip the feet out, whip its guts out, send it off to a butcher, go and pick it back up in cellophane. Young fellow like this, it is very manageable. Not a great big red stag, I'm not telling you to go and try and do that to you by yourself, but if you're shooting row, young fellow, munt jack, get stuck in, have a go yourself. You'll, um, you'll appreciate it a lot more when you've done it. Absolutely fantastic.